What's up guys and welcome back to Tech Plant. I got really lucky and I was able to visit the Atlanta Botanical Garden and let me tell you what, it was amazing. When you first step in, you're greeted with these like kind of art installations. There's these giant uh, wooden trolls or gnomes, I'm not really sure what they are, but they were pretty interesting. And then there's obviously your typical botanical outdoor garden with lots of really cool flowers, cool layout. They actually had quite a lot there and I'll show you a little bit more of that, but really what I was most excited for was their glass houses. Also, right in front of the glass houses, they do have a pond with some pretty darn big uh, bullfrogs. Me and some kids were like going nuts about the size of them because they were just huge. So definitely try and look for those. Once you step into the main glass house, this is their tropical dome. That's where you pretty much start. You're greeted with a really awesome display and some pretty cool mural art. And then from there, there are some small like cages or enclosures i think most of them have some sort of frog in there but they're specifically designed with plants from different areas there was one for columbia and it had just a lot of really cool stuff it's kind of neat to see like where these plants come from i know a lot of us collect these and we know they come from a rainforest somewhere or some tropical jungle but we don't really know where but the other glass case was from ecuador and there was just some really cool stuff in there i wish it was labeled because some of the stuff i really want to find and try and collect once i build my own terrarium because it was awesome they had the poison dart frogs in there, which I absolutely love. I've always been a fan of poison dart frogs. However, I just haven't had the chance to really like raise them properly, but one day. But once you finish looking at those glass containers, it's time to go into the big glass container, and that is their tropical house. As soon as you step in here, you are greeted with an amazing display of plants. They are really packed in here, and it is incredible. Most botanical gardens that I go to, the glass houses have a lot of plants and a lot of variety, but they're usually not planted so thickly, so that way you're able to sort of identify things. And don't get me wrong, other botanical gardens do do some of this stuff in certain patches, but this place is honestly jam-packed. You can hardly ever see the ground whenever you're walking throughout it. Another thing you'll really notice in this one that I haven't seen in really any other ones but the Fairchild Botanical Garden is all the epiphytic plants. They do a fantastic job about this here and you'll hear a little bit more later but the focus has really been on getting a lot of those going. I talked to the worker there and he really increased the watering over the last year or so and has really gotten a lot of crazy growth here. It is amazing. Everywhere you turn, you're greeted with just amazing plants like this awesome, massive anthurium. I'm not really sure what this exact species is, but it's awesome centerpiece right here on this little mini island, and all around it are really cool species. It's a fantastic place. Something I really loved about this place as well is you can look up and down anywhere, everywhere there's plants. On the very ground, like where the bricks are, there's little ferns and all kinds of little things growing out. And then as you look up, things are scaling the walls. There's hanging baskets 10 feet high, 15 feet high, 20 feet high, all the way from the ceiling. I mean, there's really plants everywhere. This place totally ties with Fairchild Botanical Garden as far as like how awesome everything is. I did not expect this to be as amazing as it was because if you look online about this botanical garden, there's very little about the glass houses. It's almost all about the outdoor garden. So I was really like unsure what it would be like, but I was like sadly mistaken thinking it was mostly an outdoor garden. Their glass houses are insane.
I know I keep repeating myself, but as I look over this footage, I'm just blown away and while I was there, it was such an amazing experience. Like I said, every square inch of this place is absolutely covered. From the little rocks guiding you along the path, all the way up into the very ceiling, there are stuff dangling everywhere. It was such a surreal and beautiful experience. I really enjoyed filming here and I'm really salty that I didn't bring my like really good cinema camera. I'm definitely planning on coming back with a better setup because I just had my Sony camera, which is nice, but it doesn't quite do what I want it to do. They actually had quite a few different water features which was really nice to see and again they're really laid out well and very overgrown. I'm not sure how old this entire greenhouse is but it seems like it's ev like everything's really grown in. I really enjoyed the aesthetic in this place as well like every service like ladder, every pipe, every like column, everything that's used to support this glass house was covered in something. Some sort of vining plant grew all the way up to the top and then sort of started to hang from the ceiling. It was really awesome. Like I said before in other videos, I really love like a more chaotic, overgrown environment. I think it's really beautiful. I'm really not a fan of like individually placed and potted plants. I really like the chaos of everything growing together and this place really satisfied like my desires. Like I said before, after talking with the guy that was working there, we actually had quite a chit chat, which I really enjoyed. He really mentioned like how he's, as he like took over this glass house, he really changed the watering schedule and it really brought out like this insane growth all the epiphytes are everywhere he's really done a fantastic job of trying to plant epiphytes on different trees different poles and you can see it quite clearly in all this footage almost every tree in there has something growing on it it was really awesome to see on top of that the variety of the epiphytes chosen were really awesome there were begonias anthuriums ferns other stuff that i can't even label but absolutely beautiful it was fantastic as you can see in this footage, his hard work has seriously paid off and made one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen that's in a glass house. If you thought that was pretty much it for this tour, this big tropical glass house, you're wrong. They have actually two other amazing glass houses that we are going to go to next. So the next glass house is the orchid showroom. So there is another like orchid style room, but a little more extreme than that that we'll see later. But this one is basically everything that's in bloom and just more of like a display of orchids. And it's beautiful. I ended up visiting this place with my wife and her family and it was awesome and they really loved this room the most. I can tell that most of my relatives, they don't really care too much about the tropical stuff just because unless you're really excited about it, it's all just kind of green if that makes any sense. But this orchid showroom was really amazing and I think even non-plant lovers would really enjoy the beauty of this place because it was phenomenal and it smelled great. I'm not even going to try and name all these orchids because I'm not very familiar with what they're all called and you guys have heard me try and pronounce things in the past and it never turns out right. But they had a ton of different stuff and they had my one favorite genus which is the Bulbophyllum. I believe genus is the proper term for the like category names. But anyways they just had tons of stuff in bloom more in the first half and towards the other half they started to get more into that whole like epiphytic, a lot of anthuriums and a lot of other awesome stuff. 
I was also pretty lucky to see the mist cycle, although I think it probably happens pretty often, but they have quite an elaborate system and pretty much the entire place gets pretty damp, misted, and soaked from the misters, and it's pretty cool feeling. You really feel like you're up in a cloud forest or something, and it's just awesome to see everything get that deeper color once it gets wet. It was really cool, however the camera wasn't probably the most happiest about it, but either way it was fun to see. This Queen Anthurium was absolutely insane, and I doubt anyone has ever seen one like this big. I know I've seen a lot of cool ones on the internet, but this one really climbed high and had leaves coming out everywhere. It was a really awesome sight to see. And then mixed within it is all sorts of orchids and other epiphytes. So like I said, they jam everything everywhere and it makes for such an amazing appearance. They had a lot more other anthuriums more on display. A lot more of the showy ones. I think they had anthurium superbum, um, clarinarivum. There was a bunch of different ones and a lot of cool Spanish moss. And again, little epiphytic orchids everywhere. The last glass house we are going to look in is the high elevation one, pretty much the cloud forest. I believe these are almost all from Ecuador or around there. And they're just a huge amount of small orchids. Mixed in here was just all kinds of amazing things. It was a really amazing sight to see. I know I said that about pretty much everything, but this one was also extremely unique. I don't know who does this all, but there must have been thousands of mounted orchids or epiphytic orchids mounted on pretty much every branch you can imagine. It was insane. By the way, this is more of like an intimate look of this place. If you want to see a little bit more of an educational look, um, I think Summer Rain Oak just put out a video maybe like two weeks ago where they she actually like interviewed people. And she, I mean, she does a great job with the interview stuff. So if you're looking for something like that, definitely go check hers out after watching this. This one is more of just like an intimate, more colored view. I don't know how else to describe it. A lot of her stuff is a little more people orientated, but this is more plant focused. So Anyways, just enjoy the footage because it's awesome. By the way, if anyone can identify this anthurium, please let me know in the comments. I really love this one. I'm pretty sure it's an anthurium and I really want to pick one up. It has awesome deep red stems and just a really cool leaf shape. So please, if you know, let me know in the comments. This glass house also had a really nice collection of nepenthes. Um, I got most of like the ones that look more like in situ or whatever they call it, where they're like kind of growing more wild looking. But they also had like hanging wooden baskets filled with all different varieties. Totally forgot to film it. Um, again, I want to come back desperately and film this like like deep dive with my cinema camera. I was with my family, so there was a certain point where we were starting to rush a little bit. I'm not blaming them because they gave me more than enough time. I bet you I spent almost an hour and a half myself filming, but at a certain point, they, I mean, you can only wait so long, right? It makes sense, whatever. The point is, I want to come back and do these two houses so bad. I wish I knew the names of these orchids, but a lot of this stuff that you're seeing are orchids. They don't seem like it because they're just these like green leafy things without flowers. But like I would almost say like 90% of this is orchids, 5% is bromeliads, maybe 2% is, uh, um, what do you call them, nepenthes, and then 3% is anthuriums. That's how crazy this mix is. And there's probably like 1% of like other stuff, but the sheer amount of orchids in here is nuts. There was a lot in bloom, but I'm also wondering like what time of year is the highest like bloom percentage, if that makes any sense. Although a lot of these stuff don't really like have very showy flowers, so to speak. So maybe I'm missing a lot of them. There were some peculiar looking flowers, a lot of interesting stuff, but I'm kind of just curious if there's a better time of year. I had some footage of their one sign and I think they have about 2000 different orchids amongst their gre like greenhouses and we're not talking 2000 orchids we're talking about 2000 distinct species which is insane. I'm pretty sure this is like one of the world's best collections for this type of orchid this like high elevation one and it was an amazing collection you have to see it. Once you finish the glass houses though it's not done they actually have a lot of other really cool displays they have this amazing carnivorous plant bog. I thought I'd never see these in real life because I'm pretty sure you have to go to like California or something to see fields of these things. These Saracenia, I believe they're called. They're, it was it was amazing. It was so beautiful. All those little like stood up tube looking things, those are all carnivorous plants and they come in different varieties. And when you see a whole field of, field of them, it's like absolutely breathtaking. I'm like, I, I, I don't know. I, don't, I can't even describe my excitement because I thought this would be something I'd have to fly all the way out to California to see like in the wild. But the sheer amount they have really makes you feel like you're in a field of them. And it was truly a spectacular sight to see. They did have a desert house, but it was rather small and very specific sort of plant. Um, 
no offense to you succulent cactus lovers i'm not as into them because i just don't do very well with them and they're not as exciting to me i guess mostly because i'm uneducated eventually when i educate myself about them i'm sure i'd be excited about this collection definitely don't skip it it's a cool collection but i didn't ha this was towards the end of my little trip and i did not have a lot of time to film it when I go back, I will, but yeah, they did have a Sweet Desert collection too. I think that pretty much sums up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this little tour. Um, again, if you want a different style tour, I highly suggest looking up Summer Rain Oak. Um, I'm not shilling her because I'm affiliated in any way. Just She makes some really cool videos. Her interviews are usually really cool, and she's just very knowledgeable about plants in general, so she can really carry on a nice interview. So if you're looking for something like that, check hers out after watching this because I, I think you'll enjoy the two perspectives of the place and it will just be a more complete picture of what Atlanta Botanical Gardens has to offer. I really hope you guys enjoyed this footage and it wasn't too shaky. Again, I want to come back and spend a lot more time here and if you ever find yourself in Atlanta, please take yourself to this place. It is worth the money. It is huge. I'm skipping like another 60 percent of this park like the actual outdoor botanical gardens is fantastic too i just didn't have a time to film it all so definitely don't skimp on this place you gotta go give yourself three to four hours it is amazing well guys as always may your plants grow strong and healthy i'll see you next time